My whole life I've fallen into the trap of taking this one at face value, at the very literal level of physical structure and support. Capricorn lays a foundation, the underpinnings, the infrastructure that makes up the scaffolding from which all other ideas are hung. But in actuality, our lives today are relying more and more on platforms which are not physical. In my own domain of e-commerce, I've thought long and hard about how to bridge the gap between the purely digital experience into something more tactile through rendered architectural simulation spaces, but so far that line of thought hasn't led to anything particularly actionable. I just have a strong feeling that the answer is in there somewhere, and I've always kind of hoped that somewhere along the line of one of my obsession projects uh, some other sublime truth about it might reveal itself to me, but it hasn't happened yet. I'll keep you posted in future videos. Uh, when a sufficient amount of shared Conflux content has been created, I'm very much looking forward to being able to address uh, my Capricorn faction directly with my own ideas. But for now, uh, I will do what I can to introduce this faction in general. The destroyer that I found myself wanting to introduce, uh, Alan Watts, is no longer with us, but I wanted to at least touch on his concepts again, because I feel like he effectively conveys the abstract, non-physical structure that is so crucial for the work we need to do. His recordings are a treasure. It really is wondrous that so much of his work was able to endure and retain the fullness of his character and manner of delivery. The way he talks about patterns is mesmerizing. If you listen to him long enough, it's as though they start to be a touchable, pliable thing. It's a little counterintuitive to the usual Capricorn drive to plan, produce, manifest, build it and they will come, yet quantum physics shows us that there is an infinite plane of potential already here vibrating before our eyes. The need to impose order on the environment falls away when you can resonate with the beauty that's already here. And that's something that I have really had to work on. Uh, and it's hard when your insides are screaming that if you would just work harder, things would improve. There is a time and a place to really grind. And it's not just aimlessly all the time, which was certainly how I was conditioned, and that's taken a lot of effort to reprogram. But now, facing the downfall of these traditional Saturnian structures uh, that we were allowed to just keep churning out without a real goal, it really begs the question, what kind of an armature would uphold the most sustainable ideas? On a meta level, we should start talking about the scaffolding for scaffolding, a platform which supports other platforms, which brings us to uh, the unconfirmed nominee, Naval Ravikant. Uh, he's probably best known for his talks on how to be wealthy, which of course fuels my Capricorn suspicions pretty heavily, but really it's from listening to him and his thought process. His work in supporting startups brought many new forms of commerce into being, which didn't exist previously, including Uber and Bitcoin. And through AngelList, new and innovative platforms are being born all the time. So the big revelation for me recently is that you can't necessarily design the optimal structure. The conditions are right and it comes into being. The forms in nature, which are self-assembling, including our own DNA and cells, don't need guidance or organization. And in the same way, there is a deeper energetic rhythm and programming than we are able to perceive. The phrase, luck is when opportunity meets preparation, is really apt. And he talks about that uh, specifically as a good start, but uh, that we create this other next tier of meta-opportunity for ourselves by developing our character and brand. And that's exactly right. You knowingly or not create a program, law of attraction style, which can 
come into alignment with the timing and current environmental conditions if you are able to recognize the pattern being presented. It's a little confusing given the incredible stagnation that we have seen in recent years uh, in a number of creative industries, but I like to think that the profit motive is the main thing in, that's the inhibiting factor in that and not necessarily that we have run out of ideas. Uh, I really love the book The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield and in it he talks about striving to make yourself a conduit for ideas and try not to take any credit for the inspirations gifted to you by the muse. Holding on too tightly to things as inherently yours forces a disconnect from the flow. But by being secure in your abundance and understanding that the more energy you allow to move through you, the more force that you are giving to the current, and that it's not finite. Or as Naval would say, it's a positive sum game. So just to speculate wildly for a moment on the circumstances that brought some of these disruptive platforms and technologies into being, and see if we can tease out some answers on what platforms we most desperately need, let's look at Uber as a specific example. Right? Uber only worked because there were so many un- and underemployed people who had vehicle payments to make, and the interface was intuitive and easy to use. So it came about at exactly the right time for the economic conditions and the demand for this type of work outlet uh, it then became more trusted and reliable. The people came to regard it as a legitimate form of transit and it came to really disrupt the existing taxi industry for better or for worse. Uh, Etsy works now because it, a critical mass really built up in the beginning with the vintage sales. Uh, don't quote me, I don't have the exact hard figures at my disposal right now. Uh, but my understanding is that uh, after they gave up on studio uh, with materials and handmade goods lumped in together, uh, they outweigh the original sort of concept of vintage sales. Uh, but knowing boatloads of sellers from both camps, it's easy to see the economic opportunity that was first made by the vintage boom when thrifting was a huge deal a few years back. It was a huge improvement over eBay or having to pick by hand, and for the people who already had the skill set uh, for knowing what to look for and how to inventory it, it wasn't necessarily a ton more work to use it. Even though, just like Uber, the lion's share of the work rests on the individual contractors, uh, and now that things are established, the maintenance done by the platforms themselves is fairly minimal. I think for the time being, successful upcoming platforms will follow in that model, creating a space for exchange where people looking to make extra money can put in work without a centralized company needing to formally employ and bankroll them. So given that framework, we could speculate that there might be something up and coming that is more effective for selling stock resources like photography. There's lots of those out there, but none of them are particularly good in my opinion. Open source programming is growing rapidly, so any number of purely labor or service oriented sites might see a big boost as conditions fluctuate, especially now that working remotely is calling so many other things into question. It will be interesting to see how that really changes the scape of the available offerings. I think it's possible that we will see a big leap in what constitutes advertising in the new future. I've always been really fascinated with micro-actions. Not like in the way of loot boxes, but in breaking down a large set of data that needs to be interpreted into tiny little tasks, like the way that reCAPTCHA does. Uh, fun fact, those uh, annoying little word photos uh, that you are asked to type out to prove you are not a robot are actually fragments of books which are being digitized or translated. So the mission of Capricorn is to build the mechanisms that break down monstrous tasks into bite-sized pieces 
and incentivize huge numbers of people to each do a tiny part. If you task a single person with trying to move a mountain, they will laugh in your face. But if you ask millions of people to each transport just a handful of sand, one grade at a time in an interval so small they don't even notice, that's really what cells are doing. Tiny, tiny pieces self-assembling. The program tells them where to go. Each individual doesn't need to place the word that they are typing out into the correct order in the book, of course. The asset is tagged and it automatically goes there. So maybe it will come down to a case of carrot versus stick. If platforms are constantly pushing these subscription models that allow you to pay money to get out of watching ads, maybe the big innovator will be the one that up and allows you to interpret some scientific data in lieu of doing either of those. Sisters of Eve was one such initiative within a video game which offered in-game currency which ultimately also translated to real-world money value uh, for participating in identifying proteins and mapping out the human genome. We have no idea what the upper limits of that are. When such mini-games, as it were, are added on to existing systems in place of mind-numbing ads, can we start to undo the damage done by decades of rabid consumerism? I think that's what it means structure, like we have all been living in boxes which are precariously stacked on top of one another and at any point one could slip out and the whole thing could be sent tumbling. The mission titles are Transaction Platforms, Essential Infrastructure, and Synergistic Architecture. I could go on all day about earthships and sustainable building technology and when I first sat down to write this, I assumed I would. But I went for a walk today in the rain and the smell of the earth was intoxicating. And I realized that simply being enchanted with it is not enough. Our panic has been eroded by a decade of greenwashing and we've been placated away from taking extreme action with regard to the climate crisis. I bought in too with the typical Capricorn hierarchical rationality that I would work my way up the ranks and then somehow magically at the top I would get some authority to call the shots and then it would finally be my time to implement some sustainable practices. It was dead wrong. But the only way out is through and maybe by now I'm a little bit closer to figuring out what we are actually supposed to be doing.